For we walk by faith, not by sight. It's a scripture from Corinthians that has been quoted for centuries. Faith and a belief in a higher power. But how do we define faith? And what happens when something so tragic takes place? It shakes our faith to its core. One, four, five, five, Franklin Mills at entry five. March 29th, 5 p.m. Chaos at the Philadelphia Mills Mall. <laughs> Surveillance video captures a fight between a group of young men. Three shots inside of the full court. In the chaos, shots ring out. I saw the police, the ambulance. I heard the helicopters. On that early evening, Nakisha Billa was on her routine bus route. I loaded passengers and I asked one passenger what was going on over there in the mall. It was at that moment Nikisha's heart began to race. Her 21-year-old son Dominic was inside the mall, anxious to buy new clothes for a job interview. I reached, I secured my bus and reached for my cell phone. I went to dial on the fourth number. And he told me that Dominic was shot. And I'm screaming, please just tell me that he's okay. And he said, no, I'm sorry, he didn't make it. And I began to scream. I had to wait until after the crime scene was processed. And it seemed like eternity because all I wanted to do was just hold on, you know? I don't know. At this point, as I'm just more angry that this happened to him, we're just devastated. This is the parents' worst nightmare. A nightmare that left Nikisha questioning her faith. I tried to tread carefully when I speak or as it relates to my faith. Before this happened, what were your prayers like? What was your relationship with God? Often I, I would pray to God and ask him for protection, not only for my sons, but for all the young people out here. I sit in awe of the mothers who are strong in faith and that can continue on and in their praise, still find a reason to be thankful and I'm told that as time goes on, I'll get there. But for me, for today, I haven't arrived. It's a pain that is unbearable. It's a pain that no one should have to endure. Dr. Dorothy Johnson Spite is a mother who knows the pain all too well. My 24-year-old son colleague was shot seven times over a parking space. And while it's been many years, the pain is still there. But I think what keeps me going and keeps me standing and breathing is my faith. How do you define faith? It's more than religion. It's more than church. It's more than reading the Bible. Faith is what, for me, is what sustains me. But knowing that that is what will keep me. What do you say to a parent standing before you saying, I have all this anger, this hurt, this pain. What do I do with that and carry my faith? People will tell you, oh, you shouldn't be angry at God. You shouldn't question him. But I did. And, and that's normal. We, we ask God, why? Why me? Reverend Martini Shaw has faced that question far too many times, counseling families who are grieving and often questioning their faith. So it's hard to um, lose a loved one. It's, it's normal to, to be sad and angry and feel and begin to blame others for even God for the experience, experience that you're, you're, you're in. But hang in there, continue to be steeped in your faith and don't give up and God will eventually bring you out. Scripture says, Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And that, that, that's what I believe. And that, 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 that part of my faith really helps me and helps me to counsel others when they're in the wilderness. Weeping, you're weeping now. 
but joy will come. Where do you think you would be without your faith? Laying out there on one of those gutters, probably drugged out of my mind, homeless, all of that. Because I know the people sometimes that I see that are in those situations, it is the lack of faith and the lack of believing in God and having hope and faith. It could have been me only by the grace of God. It wasn't me because the pain was so bad at one point, I would do anything to not feel that kind of pain. And I did. Still to come, a man who lost his faith along the way, only to find it again on a completely different path. It's pretty hard being a jewel color because I think people don't understand to be a jewel color. They say everything happens for a reason. Your path is set if you have faith. But what happens when your path suddenly takes an unexpected turn and your faith is not at all what you envisioned? This is my, my home. This is my temple. 41-year-old Marlon McElveen never thought he would call Temple home. I love being Jewish. I love coming here on Saturdays, standing by the door and watch Rabbi talk. A spiritual journey that almost didn't happen. I was that kid, like, selling drugs, doing this, not going to school, doing what I want to do, cutting school, smoking, drinking. Where do you think you were headed? At that moment? At that moment. I don't know. I physically don't know. I was like caught up with street life, smoking, drinking, carrying weapons. Like I was, I was, I was bad. I was the worst person to see in a dark alley. What do you think the outcome would have been? Dead or jail. Just like that, dead or jail. And you knew this wasn't gonna end well. I lost my dad when I was 14. Lost my best friend when I was 14. In a three month time period, I lost my auntie, my best friend, my cousin, my grandfather, my dad. At that point, I was broken. Like physically broken. I hated, I hated God. Like how can you take all these people away from me who showed me something different? Lost in his faith, Marlon was at a crossroad. I was right behind the bus stop, crying, mad, asking God, I need a home, need a job, need something. That something was in the form of a stranger. Because it was a lady <laughs> sitting there like, what's wrong? Believe in God. Black God will work it out. OK, whatever. A caring concern turned into a conversation about God, the Jewish faith, and an opportunity for a job. Faith brought you here. Brought me here. Me becoming Jewish is not like I woke up one day and I said, oh, I'm gonna become Jewish. It never happens like that. It took me eight years to make this decision that would change my life forever. I left God, but God never left me. How do you define faith? You really can't define faith. It's something you believe in your heart. You knew this was the place you were supposed to be? Yes. It's a beautiful thing walking in this, this building when you're going through something and you can come here and just sit down and just talk to God. Dear God, I just want you to listen to me right now. For all the people that's hurting and crying, for all the mothers that's bearing their child. But as Marlon was embracing his spiritual renewal, another challenge would arise. His own family would question his Jewish faith. I remember me, you know, calling my mom told her, call my sister, told her, call my brother. That's, that's the person that hurt me more out of all this, is my brother. Because he said to me, like, why? Let me pray for you. I said, what? Let me pray for you. you, you, you there's something you don't want, it's the devil. And he hung up the phone. Like, physically hung up the phone. Like, click. Then, I talked to my brother maybe one time after that. Like, my brother don't even call me no more. I have friends that 
don't even speak to me no more because what I love in my heart. You found love and peace in your heart. How do you carry on knowing that friends and family have disowned you? It's hard. It's very hard. Um, I know maybe one day they might reach out. I always <laughs> leave my door open. Do you ever feel alone in your faith? Yeah. It's pretty hard being a jewel of color because I think people don't understand to be a jewel of color. Because when you walk into a different place, they don't know who you are. I don't want to get emotional because when I get emotional, I cry. Like I cry like, and I get mad. And I keep that bottled in because I don't want to be mad. I just want to show people love. A love that would be tested once again by a movement. Stop killing our black lives matter. Okay. That day I was sitting in the parking lot and I made a video. It hurts right now because I see my people getting killed and murdered by people who post to protect us. I said, um, you, do you know the feeling of maybe getting pulled over and you think you might die? Stop killing us! Stop killing us! Once I put my keeper on my head, I'm a Jew of color. I said, I get on both sides of the playing field. I'm at the 50, 50 yard line, looking at two sides, hearing everything people saying in the middle. Do I walk with people that going through stuff? Or do I walk the opposite way to the people who else going through stuff? I said, why we just don't all walk to the 50-yard line and meet in the middle and talk? And let's figure out together what's wrong. Because if we don't figure out together what's wrong, it's not going to change. But Marlon, isn't that a heavy burden? Being a black man of Jewish faith, having to explain yourself over and over again? It is a heavy burden, but I don't mind. Because if, if 50 people ask me, out the 50, I change one person mind about Jew of color, that mean I did my job. Because it only takes one to change everything. Coming up, a community under attack as it struggles with balancing love, hate, and faith. I just sat there and I just pray to God like, God, what shall I do? It is often said hate is a mental venom that could pollute the strongest of minds. But is it strong enough to break your faith, especially when an entire community is under attack? And breaking news tonight out of Georgia, at least seven people are dead, including four women. We know that this is ethnic intimidation. Celebration hurt. My community facing difficult situation. Sometimes I don't know the answer and I just sat there and I just pray to God, like, God, what should I do? I live in fear, like, when I go on walks, like, I'm scared if I'm gonna get, like, attacked. Today's rally is for all of us, a space to feel belonging. Our community live in fear. It's, it's sad. It's very sad, especially uh, the hate toward uh, Asian American in the past years. We have pandemic, and then on the top of that, we have another problem as an Asian American by people hate us, and that's very sad, like, why? Why you, you, you have to hate us? Uh, we didn't do something wrong to you, and why you hate us? How do you balance the hatred that you're facing with your faith? I believe with love conquers all, and that's what I shared in, in the pulpit. That's what I share with my life. Trust in Jesus, trust in Him. In conversation when people call me like, uh, Pastor, I, I feel afraid to go out. Pastor, uh, I don't want to go out. That's I say like, uh, don't be afraid, just be careful. We're being killed 
and like we're being harassed and like it's not acceptable. Do not pay hate with another hate. Uh, we need to love them, pray for them. That has to be a difficult conversation to have. It is. It is a difficult conversation. We know that you have the purpose, Lord Jesus, and we want to pray. Do you ever ask why? I do ask God why. And you know what? I didn't get the answer. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. God is with us. And that will triumph over the hate. Yes, yes. That's, that's triumph uh, over the hate. And that's faith. Faith brings hope. Faith brings encouragement. Coming up, where do we stand with uniting the different faiths? Understanding our differences while bridging the gap. We're divided. We have a long way to go as it relates to other faiths as well. You've heard the phrase, lead by example, and many will follow. Set forth a strong model and your plans will multiply. But when it comes to the pain and suffering facing our cities, who's healing the wounded? And is it led by faith? Three shooting scenes, four people shot, at least two killed. All of this as city leaders fight over whether to declare a state of emergency over gun violence. The churches and the Muslim institutions, the synagogues, everybody needs to be praying and working together for our young people. Since 2020, more than 830 children have been shot in the city of Philadelphia. The bullets, they don't have a name or a religion. We're losing Muslims, Christians, Jews. We're losing folks across the whole spectrum. The faith community has a role, which includes not only churches, it includes synagogues, it includes mosques. It, includes all of us working together. We're all affected by this, and nobody is not affected by senseless violence. Where do we stand with uniting the different faiths? Are we united? We still have work to do. We still have a long ways to go. No, I'm not to unite as not only Christians, because Christians, we're divided. We have a long way to go as it relates to other faiths as well, whether it's um, Buddhism, Hinduism, um, Islam, um, Judaism, we still have a long ways to go. I think very important, we need to build unity in our community because that's the power. Unity is the power and we cannot face uh, this difficult situation by ourselves. tonight with a prayer for the city. I'm Thomas Drayden. Thanks for watching. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.